Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, this is not the main event. This is the Summer Sidecar. I believe we're on to episode seven now. Summer's just starting to fly month. by. Yeah, that scares me. So I, a month and 11 days before I go back. I'm not, I'm not happy about that. <laughs> Ryan Baldwin coming here from a shrunken blade of grass. You can tell it's fake, though, because there's like morning dew on the grass and yeah. i'm in texas in the, so in the middle of the afternoon, no morning yeah, dew left. there's no morning dew. i don't even think we have morning dew in the morning right now in texas so. and mason uh, shepherd the, over there in texas yeah. yeah we have morning dew over here but once it hits about 9 30 10 it's gone. all gone it's gone all right well today it is a slow sports day week really yep um so we're going to talk all sports adjacent cattail right here uh also, also we adjacent. don't forget to oh plug yeah the, oh yes the hat of the day the, the hat of the superman day superman is in superman the superman right there yeah kind of got it's a nice fit today so it's one of my favorites because it has this on the brim okay yeah 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 so it's it's pretty cool nice well today we are going to talk about athletes talking now, what does that, <laughs> we're talking about talking. So, but what does we're that even mean? Talking. Well, I want to just start by saying I am in no way of the camp. I'm in no way part of the shut up and dribble camp. You know, that is, a, athletes have every right to express their opinions and talk about what they want to talk about. The addendum to that is, if you've ever wondered why people go to college for journalism or broadcasting, it is because of the stories that we are about to present to you yeah. in this episode. There's a reason we take these courses and learn how to do this and learn the journalistic ethics and all that stuff. And it's so that stuff like what we're about to tell you does not happen. So, um, Really, like, at least for the past year, this first kind of started with the Aaron Rodgers immunization stuff, right? Like, yeah, that, that was one. And, and a lot of this you'll see is not um, athletes talking on like official or not like not official, but like on corporate sponsored or like ESPN shows, NBC analysts. They don't do it there. They do it on podcasts because there's a lot more freedom in what you say when you're in an espn all the way down to a college station like nttv there is a limit as to what you can say and and do not so much on podcasts (laughs) (laughs) but even still even some of that's even the stuff jose says it's not anywhere near no i know i I, I just like i just like giving him a hard time but um No, you're right. I think, and we're seeing this a lot more, like you said, because of podcasts and because of the freedom that you're allowed to more go a little bit, you know, and say more of what you really think. It's one of those things where athletes are discovering, and we talked about this a couple of weeks ago, athletes are discovering that they no longer feel like they have to answer to anybody, which we both know is not true, but they're starting to feel more of like a, I can say what I want. And in my opinion, it all kind of started in quotation marks because it's arguably, arguably you could say it started when Richard Sherman looked at Pete Carroll and said, don't ever do anything that's stupid again. Even though it wasn't on a podcast for a, a player to tell his coach, don't ever do something that's stupid ever again. People were talking about that on the news because nobody had ever heard of anything like that before. And again, like we talked about off camera, we're not saying that didn't happen, but to the point where the media could catch it and to where the guy would go on show and say, yeah, I said it. That's exactly what I said. That didn't happen a lot. No. And so with stuff like that, you get more of your Sherman's Martellus Bennett's, oh, well, Martellus and Michael Bennett and um, these outspoken players. Now you have outspoken for things that happen on the field or in like a LeBron's case, you have something that's outspoken on a political spectrum. But the point we're both trying to make here to our audience who we appreciate uh it's it's that athletes no longer feel like it's their job to keep quiet whether it's over political social or even just intermittent team issues they no longer feel like they have to keep their mouth shut 
And again, I don't think that they should have to keep their mouth shut, but you do have to realize whenever you're putting your opinion and your voice on a public platform that there are rules and regulations and things you just can't say that are associated with that. Yeah, I think we've also moved into this culture of, um, for example, right? Whenever um, the George Floyd movement and Black Lives Matter, when that was at its peak a couple of summers ago, um, I, I was, as everybody knows, I'm the big wrestling nerd here. So being on Instagram, a lot of wrestlers, you know, did the, the Blackout Tuesday thing on their Instagram, you know, that uh, all of us assumingly did uh, with, you know, you post a picture of a, a black screen and it has a message behind it, whatever. Some wrestlers, a lot of wrestlers did, but some wrestlers didn't. And there were uh, certain wrestlers that fans were like, why haven't you said anything? And, da, da, da. and it just comes down to there's pros to cons to everything. To Ryan's point, the pro of speaking your mind on the issues that you're, you know, that you feel are important to discuss are you get to use your platform to make change and you get to use your platform to offer another opinion out there that could help some other people and, you know, give some knowledge to others. But at the same time, if you're ignorant of what you're talking about, which we will talk about that with LeBron later, if you're ignorant to what you're talking about, then you're going to, because you're going to get backlash either way, but when you give something that's blatantly an ignorant statement, which I'm not including LeBron in that, and again, we'll get to that in a minute, that's when you can get in trouble. But when you don't say anything, pro people don't know what you think you don't have really everybody in your business because in this day and age people get rejected socially based on what some of their views are so people don't get to know what you think you keep that to yourself and you don't have to deal with that turmoil but con people are going to start thinking you don't care about what's going on because you're not saying anything and especially if you're a big star i don't care what the sport is wrestling football basketball that even olympics doesn't matter if you're a predominant star celebrity athlete whatever and you and people perceive you to not speak about anything then that's also a problem so we're just weaving a, a web of you can't please everybody here and you're not yeah. going to yeah and uh you know an example of your con there of not speak of you know not speaking up i was reminded of um in the last dance documentary with michael jordan he received backlash because he did not come out publicly to support, I believe it was a black Senate race, a black senator who was in the race at that point. Yeah. I want to say. Yeah. Um, but he got backlash because he did not come out publicly and say in favor of this guy. And, yeah. you know, I personally, I don't think that's fair to just get backlash for not support for coming out and not saying anything, especially because <laughs> he's like, look, my job is to be on the court and perform on the court. And so I think if you have that opinion, then that's not fair for people to come and and then criticize you for that. Now, if you are well subjectively okay. commenting on one thing and not the other, then that's like, okay, well, you spoke up about this, but why not this? Yeah. And you know, I can understand I can understand and receive why you would have that opinion, but as a as a black person, I can tell you the reason why a lot of us got upset. I'm saying a lot of us, like I was alive at the time, <laughs> but the reason why a lot of us got upset with MJ for that is it's not that he just wouldn't do it. It's the reason why. And his reason why was Republicans buy sneakers too. So he was doing that for his own mon He was being selfish. He was doing that for his own monetary gain for his own sneakers. That's different than what you're talking about was like, look, I don't get involved in that. I just play ball. That's got nothing to do with me. That's different. And and I would agree with you on that if that was the case. But his case was no, because they also buy Jordans and I want that money. So no, I'm not endorsing the guy. That's that's why we got mad, because it's like you're choosing monetary gain and selfishness over supporting your culture. That's why Michael Jordan, despite the shoes, that's why a lot of black people do not feel like Michael Jordan really even this isn't the, the MJ show today. But that's why a lot of black people don't feel like Michael Jordan even really supports a lot of black people, if that makes sense. Because we know if it comes in con conflict with his money, he's not going to do anything. That's changed over the years. Like with the George Floyd thing, he donated money and all this stuff. Donated money to the African American Museum of Natural History, which I'm pretty sure he's in. But you know what I'm saying? It's just one of those things where 
it's the reasoning behind it that got people so sour with him. All right. Well, so let's move on to why we decided to talk about this today. Um, I yeah. mentioned the Aaron Rodgers thing, but really the most recent egregious one, um, at least in the past couple months, is let's start with Draymond Green on his podcast. Um, shortly after winning the NBA championship, Draymond Green was talking about various things on his podcast, his own podcast, and he started going in on Kendrick Perkins. Yep. And Kendrick Perkins is now an analyst on ESPN. Um, I think it's on, is he on, what is it, the jump? I don't remember which one it was. I've I think seen he's on, on the, the basketball one. I've seen him on the jump. I've seen him on, I think, first take. I've seen him on a whole bunch of stuff. Numerous places. Yes. And he, in his going in, used a fairly well-known, in my opinion, I think it's fairly well-known, racist term, a racist slur against Kendrick um, Perkins. And uh, to not completely fill in the blanks, but folks, raccoon. That's all I'm yeah. going to say. Uh, a, a short word for a trash panda. There you go. Yeah, there um, we go. And he then comes out later as saying, uh, somebody told, gave him a shovel and said, here, dig yourself a little bit of a deeper hole. He tried to apologize by saying, that's how he and his friends spoke to each other growing up. And so he uh, did not necessarily know it was a racist slur. Not now, that may or may not be true, but you do realize, Draymond, when you say that, that we don't give 80-year-old white dudes a pass for dropping racist slurs when they say they were raised that way. So you, that's not really a great excuse for it. And obviously Kendrick Perkins took offense to it and sounded off yeah. right back at him. But that's, again, that's one of those ones where like we when we're taking classes we learn you know if it's even like remotely kind of something that you may not like we choose our words very carefully when we're on yes. air and when we're talking because of something like that that could be yes. misconstrued and so this is our first example of an athlete who doesn't have that kind of training and doesn't have that i'm not saying you need training I'm, there are plenty of athletes that have just that natural like tony romo just has a natural way of describe you may not like him as a player but he has a natural way of on broadcast describing plays in a way that yeah. makes sense to people and can get his point across quickly in between plays yeah not every something athlete drew, has that which oh no drew Brees did and he tried that on sunday night football right no nope. and he's a good analyst when it comes to the overall game that's why he's still on like post game shows and stuff but he like yeah it takes but to go ahead yeah yeah, but to in that position, and even Romo's gotten himself in trouble with stuff he said on there with the whole Giselle, yeah, you know, true. Brady thing and stuff like that. But when it comes to positions like that, there's an element of you have to be entertaining, but you also have to know what you're talking about. Drew Brees knows what he's talking about. He's just not very entertaining. But as far as Draymond goes, and this is with this is going to be one of the longer episodes, folks, because I can tell this is going to be one of the deeper ones, which I'm excited for. When it comes to the, the the term is a racist term, as far as when it's a minority using it against a minority, I'm not saying it's not a racist term, but there's a difference in saying the word racist in that context and using an 80-year-old white guy who's a part of the majority who actually can be racist. Minorities, we really can't be. We don't have the, the structure and the power to promote racism. Prejudice, yes. Stereotypical, yes. Racist, no. We don't have that type of power. Anyway, the 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 mo the thing with Draymond is, and that wasn't even the first instance to where that word has been used in in the NBA. Because remember, Javale McGee, it didn't get much traction. Well, it did, but just not because we lived in a different time. And around 2015, 2016, Javale McGee called that about said that about Shaq because he had him on Shaq in a pool a lot, and he got him. And he was like, dude, you're, you're really going out of your way now to embarrass me. There's a difference between having me on maybe once or twice. But Shaq had a whole Shaq in a pool. And I know you remember this, a whole Shaq in a pool segment demo, uh, I'm trying to say, uh, based on JaVale McGee. And obviously he didn't appreciate that. So he called Shaq that word. And it's one of those things where. I was telling this to my mom uh, about LeBron and this thing, which we'll get to later. 
um, about ignorance versus stupidity, okay? People don't really take into account, they're ignorant about the word ignorant, budunts. They don't understand that some of them, that ignorance is just, you, you don't know. It's, it's not knowing. That's the definition of ignorance. You do not know. It doesn't mean you don't want to know. You just don't because we're all ignorant about something. And that's a fact. We're all ignorant about something because we all don't know something. We don't know everything. But stupidity, which is a word that people do not use strongly enough, they think it's some kindergarten level insult. No, stupidity is when you could be presented with new information. You're presented with facts. You're presented with evidence to support what somebody's saying, and you still choose to ignore it because it's not what you want to believe. It doesn't fit your paradigm, and you don't want to change it. That's stupidity. And we're not talking about sports debates. We're talking about other stuff. That's stupidity. Okay. So in the case of Draymond Green, was he ignorant? Yes. Was what he said stupid? Yes. That's besides the point. But was he ignorant? Yes. My biggest problem with it is, is that throwing that word around, because there's already another word that black people use that it's, it's an argument. We're definitely not going to say it on this show, but I think most people could infer what it is. Yeah, what it is and stuff like that, that causes debate. But that word that Draymond used and to try to defend it with, that's just how me and -and so-and-so talk to each other. It's like what you said, and especially what we learn in broadcasting and media arts. When you are on camera or when you're doing a podcast, you're doing a newscast, whatever you're doing, there is a certain language barrier that you have to put yourself on based on your audience and also guidelines and and stuff like that. But for him to be like, hey, this is just how me and my friends talked. Well, that doesn't make it okay. And I think a lot of people do what he did and then say, well, this is what it doesn't matter. Right. You can talk like that to them when you're on a podcast that is going to be listened to by thousands and thousands of people. You don't need to say that. And plus, it's an attack on Kendrick Perkins' character in a very, very vulgar way. And it's one of those things where using that word especially, and again, coming from the Black perspective, when you use that word as an insult, but there's no, I hate to say there's no proof to back it up based on what the word means, but you know what I'm saying. When you're saying and I don't expect anyone to be like, he was up and here's why I wouldn't expect him to do that. But it's one of those things where you can't just throw that out. Yeah. And people not be like, why'd you call him that? Because there was no reasoning behind it. You just, he made a comparison between him and Skip and said he was acting like Skip and then called him that. Mm -hmm. And it's just like, that's not a reason you you're just insulting him. Right. And I also don't buy into the that's how me and my friends talk. Well, and here's the other thing, too. The athletes that are making comments right now like this, they can get away with it because they already have millions upon millions of dollars, right? Like yes. if I said something to that effect, I would be fired from every job I had. Yeah. And quite possibly blacklisted. Like I would always be known as the guy that said that, right? Yeah. Like there was the uh, not too long ago, there was a woman that got fired from ESPN because she alleged or she insinuated that one of uh, her coworkers was hired and promoted because she was black. Right. Mm -hmm. Immediately fired. I don't know if she's been on anything since. Draymond is going to be affected pretty much not at all by this. No. And so he can get away with saying it. I mean, he's going to get backlash, but all he has to do is apologize. The Warriors aren't kicking him off the team for this. No. But we are going to school for years, four years minimum. Some people go on to do masters in journalism and stuff to be able to do this for a living. And something like that would immediately get us fired and shut down. Oh, yeah. So, and rightfully so, like in my opinion. It's not like a cancer club. I'm like, not like saying, oh, cancel culture. I'm like, no, that's not appropriate. And you should be fired no. for that. No, 100%. So, and then, I'm oh, sorry, let me, I had, a, I had another oh, yeah, go ahead. on yeah. that. Um, now I'm trying to remember what the thought was um so yeah they can they can say stuff like that with little to no repercussions besides having to apologize and you'll see that's a theme that kind of goes through too like you know um these players don't have to you know they can say whatever they want on their podcast and they've already got stuff 
just lined up, you know, they've already got millions of dollars. So if they get knocked off a podcast or can't do a podcast anymore, it doesn't affect them in the slightest. It's their platform to do, to just say what they want to say. All right. Yeah. Now I think, I think I had something else, but go ahead. I can't, I can't remember what it was. Now. <laughs> you know, I, I apologize for that. You know, I, I think, um, well, I, I think that's also kind of the dangers of podcasts, which we learn um, at UNT, great university folks. Um, it's one of those things where we learn podcasts are the one thing. It's the one thing, even if you are vapid and have no charisma whatsoever, anybody can do it. We're doing it right now over Zoom. You know what I'm saying? Anybody can do it. If there's a topic you want to discuss, you can create a podcast with limited equipment and you can do it. There are podcasts that are obviously more professional than others, but anybody can do it. So when someone as outspoken and as, you know, verbally sometimes ignorant as Draymond, when he decides, oh, I can have a podcast that I created myself, obviously it's with a podcasting network, but it's his. It's not like he's going on a Joe Rogan show or Jim Cornette or whatever. He's not going on somebody else's show and saying that that's his. So he feels like I can say this stuff. And if you don't like it, don't listen to me. And it's one of those things where it's like you were saying, people who use that excuse of, well, this is how my friends and da, 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 da. Okay. There's a difference. And I know this is jumping across into different uh, arenas, pun intended. There's a difference between a an, an athlete using a, a word like that in a legit instance of hatred or uh, insult versus an Eminem, because Eminem went through the same things in, in rap music. And people are like, oh, the language you're using and you're saying these things about people in a certain community. And he's like, look, that's just how me and my friends talk. I don't mean anything by it. There's a difference there. That is because... And the difference is just because he makes a song where he uses that word, those words and stuff like that to rhyme or whatever, that doesn't mean that's actually what he thinks about that community or those people. It's just words that he's using that he's heard that he's like, okay, this fits da, 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 with the story I'm creating. When you're saying, hold on, did, hey, you, did you just, what, what word did you just say? Do I have to cut that or? No, I, I didn't. I didn't say anything. OK, I'm sorry. I thought I heard I, I thought I heard a word. OK, I'll, no, I'll, no. I'll just cut this part out, though, at the, <laughs> in, the, in the video. Anyway, yeah. continue. But um, but there's a difference between that and all this rhymes, whatever, versus, hey, Kendrick, I think you're a, you know, that's a blatant just right. point into like a. And and I remember what the other thing I was going to say was so. Yeah. I worked in the service industry, thankfully out of it now, but I worked in there for almost 10 years. And let me tell you, if I had gone up to a table and talked to them the way that I talked with my coworkers in the back, I would have been fired. Like, the, <laughs> like there is a, I mean, it, there is a difference and there's an expected difference in your professional persona versus what you talk with behind closed doors. And that I think pretty much everybody would probably agree on that. There are just things you can say with your friends that you can't say professionally. And, oh, yeah. And actually developing that able that switch is also a skill, right? Yeah. Like the re part of the reason I was in the service industry and didn't get fired for, you know, 10 of those for those 10 almost 10 years was because I could I had that switch where I was like, okay, I can talk a certain way with my coworkers and my friends. But when it comes to the tables, there's the professionalism and it doesn't slip. Yeah. So, and that's something that I think athletes don't develop because I've also, I played sports. I you played sports too. We've been in locker rooms before. We yeah. know that when you're just in a locker room for an extended period of time, you develop a certain language and you develop a certain uh, character and persona in the locker room that you interact with, with your other athletes. And then if you don't know how to turn that off to be professional, this is what happens. Dude, I mean, because uh, to be fair to your pros, my locker rooms, I was playing sports when I was elementary age and stuff okay. like that. But but even then, me being an actor, because I'm an actor, not an athlete, even being an entertainer, dude, the stuff people say backstage and at sure. rehearsals, you can't say that exactly. when you're doing interviews and any of that. 
dude, we could even use our experiences on Sports Zone because you and I and Jose and Russo and Alec and all of us have jokes between each other and whatever the case may be that are not suitable for television, especially Russo. So it's one of those things where, but it goes back to what I said because Draymond for one is Draymond, but also is because it's his. It's like I don't have to censor myself. It's mine. And because a, a, an example, and this wasn't even because of foul language or profanity, Shannon Sharp is the best example of this, in my opinion, because CBS didn't renew his contract to do that because Shannon, if you all cannot tell, when he talks and he gets really excited and goes really fast, you can't understand a word that he's, you couldn't understand a word that he said because it, you, it was, you couldn't, you couldn't understand him. He was talking really fast. His words were going together. And so CBS was like, okay, you've been doing this for long enough here. We're not going to renew your contract for that. Fox picked him up, and you can see he'd worked on that. He had worked on kind of articulating and enunciating more, still being good old Uncle Shay Shay, but he's not speaking the way he was when he was doing CBS. And even stuff like that is cause for you have to keep in mind what you're doing because you can't just – well, this is how I am. This is how I speak. Because, and that's where people like you and I are like, okay, that's an excuse because that's it's a backhanded, I mean, it's a backhanded apology because it's like, yeah, I'm sorry, I didn't know. This is just how we've been speaking. It's not really taking that responsibility of my bad because he still because the reality is that type of apology, and I'm not going to speak for Draymond, but that type of apology to some would view like, OK, he still feels that way about Kendrick Perkins. He's just sorry he did use a different word for that, for how right. he feels yeah. about Kendrick Perkins. He so, would still call him that word with his friends. He's just sorry that he did it in public where he got backlash. Yeah. And so I guess this we'll call this first uh, bit here. Athletes against uh, analysts or personalities, yeah. because, that you know, part of that, too, was. He was comparing them to Skip. He said, you're just like Skip. So, I mean, he's also basically, uh, and this is less talked about because obviously the word that he used is the central point, but he's also taking a shot at Skip and calling him basically that too because they said you're so alike and you're acting like him. And yeah. this is like, you know, now the second case in a couple of months with uh, Kevin Durant being the first one firing, you know, taking shots of personality. It's like, first of all, I think like like I said before, when we talked about that, you signed up for this as a pro athlete. You are you signed up to be analyzed and discussed. There is no, there's. I mean, this has been going, analyst and analysis and discussion has been going on since sports was a thing, and people were writing in newspapers. Yeah, like, this is not a surprise anymore. You can get mad about it, and you can use that as you know, um, motivation and drive, but you can't. You know, as long as they are not character attacking you, you can't go character attacking these people back, or, you know, first for no reason. Right? Yeah, you know, 100 percent. Like if and Kendrick you know, had if Kendrick had come out saying something about Draymond Green and how he's X type of person. Yeah, he, sure. I get it. But if he's just saying something about your play. That's what he's paid to do, no matter how wrong or right he might be. That's what he's paid to do. He's not attacking your character. He's not saying he doesn't work hard or whatever. Maybe I mean. I'm pretty sure he hasn't said that. I think we probably would have heard about that in the story. But yeah. like, if they're not attacking your character, you can't just go around attacking these people first. No, 100%. And I think two things. One, I think athletes have lost the plot of, well, if you haven't played the game, then you can, okay, for one, that doesn't even make sense because if that's the case, there are a lot of coaches who shouldn't be <laughs> yeah. coaching. And we're very they, quickly running out of journalists and people that can write and talk about this because that that number of yeah. people that have played the game at the highest level that then go on to be writers and analysts just isn't very high. Yeah, and it's just like, you know, like you know, you wouldn't have coaches being coaches. Like, oh, you – like imagine a player going to their coach. Well, coach, did you play? No. Then how can you tell me what – because there are people like you and I – we watch the stuff, and this Shannon had to say this about Kevin Durant to Kevin Durant. Yeah, dude, I, I didn't play basketball. You're right, but guess what? I've watched it all my life, and I know what to look for, and I know how to analyze it. If you know how to analyze sports, again, like we've discussed before, there is a difference between being like, Kevin Durant sucks, period, and then moving on. Okay, that guy doesn't know 
anything if he says that. Not because Kevin Durant doesn't suck, but because he's not offering reasons. When you're an analyst, your job is to offer the reasons why you are giving the takes that you take. Now, Skip's hatred for LeBron is just because he's in love with MJ. That's that's what that is. But but even he acknowledges when LeBron plays well, right? That's yeah. the thing. He, when he he'll even be like, you know. LeBron had a great game, but then he doesn't. He, he obviously does, doesn't miss an opportunity to be like, "Oh well, LeBron missed ten free throws." But when he plays well, he's like, "You know what? He played well this game." He still gives him the credit when he does well. Yeah, and I think that's the thing is just athletes who feel like, "Well, you, you've never played the game." Well, duh, dummy, I never played the game. It doesn't mean I didn't. I don't know the game. It does. It doesn't mean I don't study the game. I want it. <laughs> this would drive him up wall. I want someone to go up to Alec Rapp, our good buddy Alec Rapp, and tell him you can't talk about anything because you don't play the game. This guy, especially for football, just because the season ends, does, and he's a perfect example, that's why I brought him up, just because the season ends does not mean he's not looking at film for the draft that's coming up, and he's not looking at college players, what they did in high school and all that stuff. He studies it. He keeps a journal of this stuff. But just because he did doesn't play it, doesn't mean what he's saying doesn't have any merit because he's not making blanket statements with no supporting facts, just like you do, just like I do, you know, and that's becomes the problem. Like when these athletes are like, because even Draymond said before he, what he said about Kendrick Perkins, he said the same thing Kevin Durant said. These guys who haven't played the game, they're trying to tell us what we're doing. They don't know they didn't play it. Listen, again, I'm going jump, jumping over to the musical arena now. There is a difference between an w- between a musician like Eminem. Again, he's a perfect example. When he was like, "All these guys are telling me that I've fallen off, that I that I haven't been achieving the level of musical success because I'm not as good, excuse me, as I used to be anymore." There is a difference between a musician saying, "You guys have never written songs. You guys don't know the process of creating a song, so you cannot tell me." Now that doesn't mean you have to like it but you can't tell me that I don't know what I'm doing just because you don't like the song that I put out. That means you don't like it. That doesn't mean I don't know what I'm doing. You've never been through this process. That's different. And I'm not saying people don't analyze music, but you get what I'm saying. That's different. When you're an athlete, people don't have to play the game to study it and know what, and know stuff. Right. And to lean into that, the perfect example is Richard Sherman. When he went on first take, I love me some Richard Sherman. I don't approve of some of the choices he makes, like ones he made in his personal life a couple years ago uh, involving his wife. But I love Richard Sherman. But going on to first take, as entertaining as it is, but going on first take and Skip Bayless and telling him, Skip, in my 25 years of life, I'm better at life than you. It's like, okay, Skip is asking you if you're better than if you think you're better than Darrell Revis is right now. And I can. And again, I'm not saying Skip is always right. And Sherman was saying you ignore the statistics. You sound ignorant. You know, the statistics are there. So I get why he got frustrated. And as again, it's entertaining. People love to hear people say stuff like that to Skip. He can take that on the chin, but it's funny to hear people say that to him. But at the same in the same breath, going on television on first take and telling the analyst, I'm better at life than you you're a loser and stuff like that, that doesn't accomplish anything. You're just right. bashing him because you don't like what he's saying, but that's not doing anything. And I think a lot of athletes have that problem. I think when it comes to athletes talking, a lot of them do not do, they don't think. Perfect example, DK Metcalf, when he got called out by Shannon Sharp over something, he tried to say that Shannon Sharp was a washed up old has been and DK Metcalf could surpass his career easily i'm paraphrasing and then if you don't know who shannon sharp is but you know who dk metcalf is you think okay he said that but if you're a knowledgeable sports fan you know okay shannon sharp is three-time super bowl champion he's a a hall of famer he's one of the best tight ends to ever play the game top three all time kid you're you're probably (laughs) never going to surpass that i don't know where you thought got that from and he, he had to try to retract that but that's what i'm saying going out of your way to knock analysts personally, going out of your way to say, you can't tell me because you never played the game. They're not thinking. It's not that mindset of, well, yeah, they can tell me about the game. They watch it. They analyze it. They study it. 
like I said, we're dealing with people who studied the game, not the fans with four followers on their Twitter accounts who just say you suck. We're dealing with people who actually know something about the game. Yeah. All right. So that's that that whole thing wraps up athletes on talking on personalities. Yeah. So that that we basically you can boil it down to look. As long as the personality is not attacking you personally, you know, attacking your your you. Yeah. That's what they're paid to do. Don't attack them personally. If you want to throw stats back at them and prove them wrong that way, fine. But there's no reason to attack them personally unless they've attacked you personally first. So now let's move to athletes talking about issues. We just call it issues, I guess. Current current events. Athletes on current events. So as we mentioned before, you know, Aaron Rodgers on the Pat McAfee show tries to go on and explain, you know, he told reporters that he was immunized against COVID-19, which everyone took to meant vaccinated, but but it everyone speculates that he said that in a misleading way because he wasn't actually vaccinated as it turned out and he missed games so he goes on the mcafee show which is i guess a little bit more than a podcast i mean it's te- I would it say it's technically a podcast because it's a, but it's it's that same format right it's not like on a network it's on youtube yeah, it, and it's a podcast because there are versions of it where he's saying stuff and you can't hear it i yeah. mean you can't see it but if you're watching the YouTube, it's like yeah. an interview. Yeah, it's it's like a it's it's like a podcast with extras. Yes. So to, yeah. Um, and so then he tries to go on and explain himself, and actually gets more backlash because the stuff he said doesn't make sense. And he's uh, attempts to right the ship. We we're pretty much met with widespread backlash because. Everyone was kind of like, okay, you're not really, you know, you you don't actually, or you're not actually educated. You'd say you did the research, but you won't share who are your medical professionals. You won't give us the research and all the research that you gave, the, uh, that you say you gave does not line up with what we knew at the time. Yeah. Nor does, did the NFL think so? Because the NFL was like, no, this doesn't count. And yet you continue to act like it did count. So, and now the most recent one is LeBron's recent remarks on the Brittany Griner situation. And boy, you know how much I love LeBron James and his totally (laughs) non-hypocritical statements that he continues to put out. Um, So I don't, I've got to find the, uh, the exact quote here because this, this one has probably made me the most mad out of all of them. Um, so let's, let's rewind a little bit back to, uh, 2019 pre pandemic time. I know that's a long time ago. People may not even remember it, but, uh, former Rockets owner who is now, I believe the current owner of, or is a GM of the 76ers owner GM, one of those of the 76ers, Daryl Morey yeah. tweeted out in support of Hong Kong and LeBron James said uh, ba- basically there's a big backlash by the NBA against Daryl Morey because China, because the NBA has big deals with China and there are players in China at the time. And so, yeah, the, the NBA, the NBA gave a bunch of backlash towards Maori. There's pretty mixed feelings, I think on both sides. Um, yeah. But the big quote that LeBron said was, I don't want to get into a word or sentence feud with Daryl Morey. But I believe he wasn't educated on the situation at hand, and he spoke, and so many people could have been harmed, not only financially, which, by the way, financially being the first word that you say, okay, but physically, emotionally, spiritually. So just be careful what we tweet and what we say and what we do. Even though, yes, we do have freedom of speech, but there can be a lot of negative that comes with that, too. So that's his whole quote. Basically, he's saying Daryl Morey was not educated on the issue of China versus Hong Kong, which... It turns out Maury actually has very close friends and ties with people in Hong Kong, so that's not even true. But he said that if you say that without being educated on the subject, you can cause negative harm, or you can cause harm. So now LeBron James is has his own 
pod or talk show, I guess people are yeah, ESPN H- calls H- it a talk H- show podcast. Yeah, called the shop. The trailer for a new episode has him saying, uh, in relation to Brittany Griner being wrongfully detained in Russia, how can she feel like America has her back? I would be feeling like, do I even want to go back to America? Okay. LeBron, is President Biden calling you every day to update you on the geopolitical aspects and negotiations between the U.S. and Russia? Obviously no. not, no. Did, you, did LeBron know at this time that there are two, there was one other, there's still one more person, American citizen in, the, in Russia being wrongfully detained? Probably not because I didn't know that until I had, until I started digging around and doing my research. We just got one former Marine back in by trading a prisoner that we had convicted here of trans of smuggling cocaine into the United States. We traded that prisoner for a former Marine because he was basically coughing up blood. There were health concerns that he had been exposed to tuberculosis. So they made the decision to get him back by trading this prisoner. It took he was there for over two years. Brittany Grinder has been there for nearly three months, which is a long time. Yeah. Or wrongfully detained because they didn't actually call the U.S. didn't actually call her wrongfully detained, which bumps it up to the U.S. government until I believe it was March. If I have the timeline right here. Uh, have to make sure I got this one right here. This is why we have the research. Uh, yes, no, May 3rd. She was deemed yeah. wrongfully detained on May 3rd by the U.S. government, which is the first time the U.S. government can actually officially bump it up into negotiation territory and move it up to yeah. their special counsel. So, LeBron, you probably don't know that there was there was two American citizens being wrongfully detained besides Griner. There's still one that was left over there who's asking, who has articles and statements going out going like, how long am I going to be here? Because he's been there nearly three years, and Brittany Griner has been there 120 days, or over no, over 100 days. I don't know what the exact yeah. number is, but she had she was not declared wrongfully de- uh, detained until May. How it's it's just you you can't you can't tell me that this isn't an uneducated response. What do you mean? How would she want to come back here? Do you think that they are not trying to do everything they can? It took three years to get this former Marine back who was wrongfully detained. They're, and it's Russia. Russia doesn't like us. We don't like Russia. It's not going to be solved overnight. It's just not. That's not how this stuff works. And I don't know if I, maybe I'm off the rails on it a little bit, but it just seems so, um, you know, it seems just uneducated and ignorant. Maybe, maybe not stupid, but like you said, there's—I mean, there's a difference. But maybe it's ignorant for him for him to say, you know, Brittany may not want to come back to America or something like that because it's just they're. I'm sure they're doing everything they can. Yeah. Okay. So, for one, it, it, it's definitely ignorance because he's not knowing the 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 the, the, grav- the gravitas of uh, the situation in the sense of, you know, or not at least, or he wasn't thinking of, okay, I'm saying this in reference to Russia. You know, if she was to go on a trip to Spain and he said this, that's different. Here's the thing, Uh, because Ennis Cantor weighed in and he needs to keep his mouth shut and I'll explain why in a minute. Uh, Let's take this back, okay? I am not saying what LeBron said was okay, and whoever edited that trailer should be fired because that is not how you get someone interested in your program by keeping in comments like that. Yeah. But anyway, the reason I can understand, and I'll, I'll say this, my, my dad took up for him, and this was the mindset I took before I even talked to my parents about him, well, about it. The reason why I can understand where LeBron is coming from and saying that is, again, I'm black. And what I'm saying is, look at look at world wars. Look at every war that black people have served in. And I love I love Shannon Sharp because he made this claim when we were talking about Colin Kaepernick and he's making it seem like, oh, he's disrespecting the military. 
with people saying that like black people don't serve. Black people have been serving this country in wars in the military. And when we got back over here fighting for our freedom, it's not just white people who did it. We did it, too, among other ethnicities. But when we got back here, we were still segregated. We were still treated worse than animals. We were still treated with a lack of respect. And we fought for this country. My papa, who was in the Air Force in World War in World War Two, fought for this country came back to go to a diner he couldn't get in because he was a black man. So when LeBron says that's the way he would be thinking as a black person, even though it was an ignorant comment he shouldn't have made, I can understand him thinking that this country has had a history of letting us down. And that's, it doesn't matter if we're talking about Russia or China or whatever. This country has had a history of letting its minorities, especially black people down. So I will not sit by and defend what he said. And I'm going to keep going, but I just want to make this clear. I will not sit by and defend what he said, but I will not tolerate people like Ennis Cantor coming in and saying, who's Turkish, whose own government is looking for him because of comments he's made because he's very outspoken. I'm not going to tolerate him coming at LeBron, telling him that he can leave and that he takes his freedom for granted because we're black. We don't get to take our freedom for granted because it could be taken from us any day. There is a cop somewhere, and I'm just using cop as an example. There is a cop somewhere. He doesn't care that LeBron James is one of the biggest pop media basketball icons of the of the decade of a century. Some There's someone who, who would take LeBron out if they could because he's black. They don't care who he is. So I don't need Ennis Cantor to come in and say these things. He's Turkish. He's not from here originally, and he appreciates this because Turkey don't doesn't treat their citizens well based on what he said and all that stuff. So we don't need commentary from him. And I will not verbally say, oh, LeBron, what a moron, because being a black person, I get that. And I'm not faulting you for not getting it or other people for not getting it when you first saw it. You're not black. So you're not going to understand that off the front end because everybody a lot of people were upset and he had to be like well i wasn't knocking america which his his apology i'll admit that was weak because he was but he was trying to take it back which i can understand from a business perspective but that wasn't what he was saying but where i fault him and what he said was okay like you said this is russia like i said if she went to spain or whatever that's different this is russia nobody is going to question whether they want to come back to america if they're in russia detained in a prison That's one. Two, it's one of these things where when we're in this time of people wanting to get her back home, you should be showing your support, in my opinion, in that alone. Saying stuff like, well, I don't know, you know, I don't know how she wants to come back here. If it were me, I would be wondering, that's you. You keep that to you. That's something like we talked about stuff that you you can say on air and off air. That's something you tell to your wife or your sons, when you have those private conversations. You don't say that in a public forum because that there is no positivity in that. Even though what I just said makes sense and it's just the way that I feel like we should be looking at it from a Black perspective, in my opinion, you still can't say something like that because that doesn't, that doesn't help her. You're not helping yourself and it doesn't do anything but cause more division, which it did. So So in closing, am I defending what he said? Absolutely not. I don't think that that's something we needed to hear. And I don't think that's something that should have been put in the trailer. I mean, really, they can talk about it, but I don't think that's something that he really should have said out loud in public. That's a home conversation. But is it this big deal to where people should be saying, if you don't like America, you can no, because you don't understand the perspective of a black person, a minority, but a black person who knows what this country has done to our veterans and still does to us now. But like I was telling my mom, I know I said closing, but I'm just thinking of stuff. What I was telling my mom is, and another reason why I don't like what he said is because you and I have the ability to do this about this topic. I have the ability to talk to my parents about this topic. In places like Russia, saying stuff like that will get you killed. That that's Mm -hmm. not an over-exaggeration. That's just the truth. We have the ability to discuss these things And well, for one, we should be able to. That's another problem America has. They don't want us to talk about it, but we have the ability to discuss these things. They don't. So again, it's, 
I feel like what made it really, really bad is because of the country where it is and because the situation. If this was something different, then yeah, people would be upset. But like going to Jamaica and question whether you want to go back to America, eh, it's different. Yeah. But when it's Russia and you know how they're probably being treated and you say that, that's insensitive. And like I said, it doesn't help anybody. But to the people who are just like, he doesn't appreciate his life here, da, 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 da. You need to take a real hard look at the climate we're living in now and understanding how this country has done us throughout history. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. And I fully acknowledge that I don't understand everything that black people have been through and I don't pretend to. And I'm not saying that this is not an opinion he can't have. It's go, tying it back into earlier with Draymond Green. Is it okay for you to have the opinion? Absolutely. That's not something you say <laughs> on a podcast. It's not. You can have the opinion, but there's a difference between having the opinion. Draymond Green can think that word about Kendrick Perkins all he wants, but as soon as you say it and put it out there, you can't do that on a public forum. Same thing with this statement. You can't say that on a public forum because, like you mentioned, it doesn't help Brittany Griner's case because right now, I mean, if we know Russia was trying to tamper with elections and has troll farms on social media all to cause divisiveness, you think they're not rubbing their hands going, oh, man. The Americans are helping us out by putting out more divisiveness. Like that all you'd have done is help them and made this such a big deal that they can now get whatever they want. You're not helping any kind of stuff. Because if you think that they're not looking at what LeBron James and others are saying to use that as leverage, you're naive. I can guarantee you Russia is looking at that going, that's perfect. That's exactly what we need. And the longer we hold out, if there's more divisiveness, if there's more people like the uh um, Phoenix Mercury coach who's saying stuff like if it was LeBron he'd be home right it's a statement about the value of women it's a statement about the value of a black person it's a statement about the value of a gay person all of those things which it's not because again there is a straight white man still sitting in Russia for the past three years so it's not a statement about any of that it's a like you're just causing more divisiveness when the government is just trying to get people home like the government the, the Russian state media is speculating that the U.S. is going to give over a guy named Victor Bout, who has been convicted on 25 years for gun smuggling to potentially, you know, kill U.S. citizens and officials, has the nickname Merchant of Death, has been an arms smuggler in Africa and possibly in the Middle East for decades. They're thinking about trading this guy back to Russia for Brittany Griner and maybe Peter Whelan, or uh, Paul Whelan. It's not anything about that. It's about th we'd have to let this guy go free for them. This guy that has been convicted of conspiracy to kill U.S. officers and employees and citizens. It's not an easy, okay, let's ship him off deal. This is not something that happens overnight, and these comments don't help. Yeah, and it's I think I, – sorry. I, I think okay. what we're talking about is – we're talking about the, the grand scheme of this is being informed, having knowledge. If you yeah. don't have it, I, I said this earlier, what I would have done if I was LeBron and, 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 you know, it's on his HBO show, the shops, it's not really a podcast, more of just a talk show with him and his friends and guests that they bring. But what I would have done still in that environment on television, whatever is I would have said, now I don't know everything because before I get to what I would have said, let's just break this down now. You're not going to please everybody. You're going to upset people no matter what you say or do. So you're not going to be able to please everybody. But what you at least can do for yourself or the reasonable people, because there's always going to be nuts out there, what you can do for yourself for the reasonable people is say, now, I don't know everything about the situation or about the or whatever. But my opinion is because on that front, you're letting people know you don't know everything about it. You're just giving an opinion on information that you don't have. You're letting people know that you're ignorant to things and you could use some help or you're not saying you could use smoke, but you're letting people know that you're ignorant to something. When you just blurt stuff out, again, that, that Phoenix Mercury coach, what she said to a lot of people made sense. What she said to a lot of people didn't, especially, like you said, considering the factors that are, well, no, that's not really supported by the fact there's a straight white man in there and 
you know, these factors, but making statements like even she made was, which wasn't even as harmless in my opinion as LeBron. But the thing in my opinion is she made a statement based on what you're describing to me in the situation that's not informed. Because one thing about America, and I will say this, and I don't regret saying this because this is the truth, because it's been happening since the Salem witch trials, and this is just the reality. People like the short answer to, to problems. They like to go with what is familiar. Perfect example, like I said, the Salem witch trials. This is someone I am unfamiliar with, and they have talents I don't have, so witch or a warlock. This is someone I don't like, witch, warlock. It's not a, hmm, I wonder why they're doing this. Let me look into it. Let me do my that time century version of research. It's, we've been made to believe that witches and warlocks exist. And this is a strange person that I'm not aware of, witch, warlock. The short answers to those problems. And, Amer and we have not gotten out of that. More people do research than they did back then, because back then, societies was based primarily on religion, which unfortunately ours is about to go back to, I'm just saying. But in this case, what she could have done, if, if, you, if you want to frame this in a better light, in my opinion, what she could have done is do the research, think like you did. Listen, it's not easy to trade someone to get back here with this arms dealer and then this, this cretin, this monster. It's not easy to just do that and it's a process, right? But people don't know that. So what's their first response? This is a this is a gay woman, a gay black woman. So she is obviously not priority. But if it was him, he'd be home. You know what I mean? It's what's familiar. It's the easy answer to go with versus what you just said. I guarantee you, and I'm not knocking her, I'm guaranteeing she doesn't know what you just told me. I didn't even know it till you told me. Yeah, a lot of I, people probably don't know that, but they yeah. go with the first instinct because it's easy. There's no research involved and they can make a point that they know some people are going to agree with because I can guarantee you a lot of women in the WNBA heard that and were like, yep, she's right. Versus someone like you was like, well, no, she's wrong because that's not even statistically supported by what's actually going on. But it's the easy, short answer that people are comfortable with giving. And I'm not knocking her for saying that. Maybe that's how she really feels. It doesn't make it right or wrong. That's how she feels. So I'm not knocking her. But you just proved how that's not supported what she said. And you're not wrong for doing that either, because you are making a statement based on fact. She's basing hers off of emotion. Both are right or wrong in whatever universe people want to live in. All I'm saying is, that answer that she gave, unlike yours, the only difference is it's not based in fact. It's not based in research. It's not based in what the government is and isn't doing and all of the factors of who might be traded for her. That's, that's not, that wasn't what it was. She was basing it off of a common feeling that a lot of women do have that if it was a male, or in this case, if this was a, a predominant male superstar that people would miss and it wasn't a a uh, gay black woman, a lesbian black woman, I should say, if it wasn't her, we wouldn't be having this problem. And I, you know, it's just that that's my opinion on stuff like that. And, and just that in general. And again, it's one of those ones where it's like, you know, if you feel that way, that's a perfectly valid feeling to have, if that's how you feel. But there's a difference between having the feeling and speaking it in a press conference and getting that out into the public sphere, especially now in the world we live in. Like 40 years ago, is that probably even news? I mean, like what she said, that might not even make it outside the local papers 40 years ago, right? Yeah. Um, but now everything's a soundbite. Everything goes up on social media. Everything is instantly reported. And so it, it's out there all the time. So yep. you have to be even more conscious of what you are putting out into the social sphere and i just like and i don't i this is this is debatable but in my opinion i think lebron being over there would actually make he'd be over there even longer i think russia would be salivating over yeah. everything that they could get they like they would be pushing so hard for anything and everything to get look for the u.s to you know to try to have the u.s try and get him back 
I don't think that it would have been that clear cut either. Cause then I'm, I'm sure the list of stuff they would ask for would have the U S going like, I don't even know if we can do that. So it's, yeah, it's one of those things where I think the, you're kind of seeing now the overarching theme of this particular one is we go to school because we realize that, or because we're trained to go, okay, before we open our mouths on the subject, or we should be trained, because I know yeah. <laughs> there are journalists that do this, but the goal yeah. of, of, of going to school for this is so we can go, okay, instead of making these comments out of emotion, and instead of doing a misinformed story or take, we go in like I did today. I go in, I do the research. I have the full timeline over here of Brittany Griner's detention. I have what LeBron said three years ago about Hong Kong and being informed. I have all this stuff as a reference so that I can make an informed opinion and not speak out of emotion. This is what we do. This is what we are taught. And this is why we go to school. Athletes don't have that. Some of them have a natural knack for it, but when they don't have that training, they often speak without thinking or without, um, I guess they speak in ignorance of what their words are going to come out as in the social sphere, not without yep. thinking because they, 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 we obviously, like we said, we acknowledge and know that they can have those feelings and that that's okay to feel and have that opinion, but you can't, you, they're ignorant of how that say, of saying that and how that would go over in the social sphere. Whereas yeah, I, I, we, that's why we go to school is so we know. Yes. And, and the thing about it is, is there are things, you know, less volatile things, like you said, in, in our training and what we're doing where the same example applies to where I can't talk to you guys on sports zone like my family talks about sports I can make a joke and this had this had Ryan rolling Ryan rolling when I said this one time when I say things like he can't make two with a pencil and paper I can say stuff like that because it's a joke but then I have to back that up I can't say that flat you know right. that's what we learn I can't say that flat a lot of these athletes because they either, especially in basketball's case, were able to come from another country or they uh, only spent like a couple years in college or in some cases didn't go to any college, uh, got out of high school. A lot of these athletes are talk to the media like they're talking to their friend on their sofa. And that's a problem. Draymond's not going to change. And I'm not saying this to get back on him, but he's the type of person he's going to keep talking like that and he's just going to have to get called out for it because that's not going to change because that's just he's a, he's too old at this point in his life to do stuff like that to to realize you know maybe i shouldn't say that no it's just like okay i won't say that in public and and stuff like that so maybe that's a good change but not in the sense of he he may say it again we don't know because that's just who draymond is kevin duran is the perfect example of this especially with his incident with michael rapaport that was embarrassing because here you have this grown adult man attacking this analyst and actor and whatever and it just, it's one of these things where it's like, dude, you are a public figure. This is not someone that you can say this to in the privacy of your own home. You are saying this to a public figure who, because he's a public figure, if he posts these, which he did, this would not be a surprise. And it wasn't because this is a public figure. So he was like, okay, I'm going to post this now because he felt the need to say this to me, and I'm not even responding to him anymore. You know, it's stuff like that. They're not thinking because, again, like you said, and you hit the nail on the head perfectly, they're not getting what we got from a training level in, our, in, in this field to a perspective level of college, which is maturity, growth. We go to school to learn and to get informed. I'm taking my summer class right now on the sociology of marriage and family. And I'm learning a lot of stuff about the sociology of different aspects of family life that contribute to society so I can be more informed so no one can just tell me anything. That's why I did it with philosophy and, and stuff like that, because it's important. And that's what you get when you go to school or you learn from creditable sources. That's what you get. You learn these things so no one can convince you. And then you get that training. But when you are you're able to say whatever, do whatever, because it's like what you said about Draymond early in the show. Kevin Durant really has never suffered the consequences of stuff that he's told people when he's been upset at them, other than people being like, dude, this guy's a child. And, and he's gotten a stigma. 
of being sensitive. It's the only thing that's happened to him. It hasn't taken away any of his millions of dollars, hasn't taken away any of the mansions, hasn't taken away the sneaker deal. It just shows people how immature he is. But that's still a problem in the in the in the grand scheme because it shows other athletes it's okay to do that. I have never seen perfect example. We're giving a lot of examples today, but this is an important episode. Shikari Richardson really disappointed me through the not even the actions you know that caused her to miss out on the Olympics, but of the 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 track Hall of Famers that have come out in support of her, and she's just dissed them and dismissed them. When Allison Felix was on the Tonight Show, I um, can't remember if she was with Kimmel or Fallon, but she was on one of those late night shows, and she was talking about, hey, you know, she needs our support, da 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 you know, pray for her, reach out to her, whatever. Shikari Richardson goes on Instagram next day and talks about when people give you the credit or when people try to give you support and with cameras in their face, it still means it's nothing if they didn't give it to you in person. And it's that not, it's that ignorant perspective of, well, that's really stupid. It's that mindset of, okay, this is Allison Felix, who is a track legend. She does not have to call you. You better be glad she brought you up. It's the same thing with Usain Bolt. He tried to give her some advice. She knocked him. Usain Bolt of all people. But it's like I said, it's that thing where these athletes don't think. They're, they're ignorant. Some of them are stupid. They're doing these things and saying these things because they're talking, they're, they're turning their media into, I'm talking to my friend who's sitting on my couch. And that's, that's not what should be happening. And that's the problem. And, and I honestly feel like, in my opinion, and I'm very passionate about it, I honestly feel like people like Shikari Richardson, the younger, younger generation of athletes, are sending people the wrong message when you do stuff like that. Because what I believe, and it's been instilled in me from being a professional wrestling fan and stuff like that, there is a level of respect you are supposed to have for the people who come before you in your sport. In my opinion, well, really in anything, but you know what I mean. There is a level of respect. And she has shown none to track to track legends. Draymond Green has shown none. I'm not saying KP was a legend, but KP was playing way before Draymond. You know, they're DK to Shannon Sharp, all these things. Kevin Durant still to these analysts and stuff. And I'm not saying because they played, but obviously they didn't. But the level of respect comes from the knowledge of knowing, because it all ties in. The level of respect comes from the knowledge of knowing these people did not have to play the game to know the game. That's a very short-sighted way of thinking. And a lot of athletes are short-sighted, and you can see that in what they say. And I think this segues nicely into what I'm going to call the last segment because it's not like this is a media versus the athletes type deal. No. Yeah. We're going to now go into athletes on athletes. I think you segue that nicely because I think part of the problem is, especially with social media, that athletes trash talking each other on social media generates clicks and generates views and generates buzz. But I think it's an overall negative. Like you just you said, Ennis Cantor, you know, was LeBron. We talked to already talked about LeBron. Was saying that wrong? Yes. Was Ennis Cantor also going in and saying all this stuff about, like you described about LeBron James, also wrong? Absolutely. And then you just go and you Google anytime like athletes fighting on social media, you'll find so many stories about athletes trash talking each other over social media. And I think that's part of, I mean, there's no, as long as it doesn't get too crazy, right? There's no punishment. There's no backlash for it. But I think that's part of where this comes from. They can say whatever they want to each other. And we already know they've been doing it on the court for years, right? For trash talking for decades has been a deal. Yeah, and it's one of the best parts of the game. It creates competition. And it is. But, I mean, there's also, because there was always that separation between, uh, you know, from the field to the fans, the trash talking stayed on the field. A lot of the times, I'd say 99% of the time, you didn't actually see or hear the trash talking that went on between players 
And so, yes, it bred rivalry. It was good for, uh, it was good for ratings, but then, you know, there's the debate of, is it any different than trash talking each other on social media? I think it is because there's not that separation anymore between, yeah. between the, the trash talk and the fans, right? Like, yeah, it's one of those things where it's just, I think they're, you know, the trash talking back and forth, it hurts just as much as everything else. Right. And it's like with the golf the two different golf tours like we talked about right now so many players have come out and talked about how these players don't you know um or have talked negatively about these players leaving for the live tour again you you don't know what these players are going through in their lives a lot of these players that have left for the tour for the other for the live tour they're towards the end of their career towards the end of their prime probably aren't going to be very competitive but they have a chance to make money and you know fend fend for their families you can debate the morality of it but unless you know what's going on in their lives it's hard for you to slander these people straight up and say i can't believe you've done this yeah right? especially in in mickelson's case because he's a noted gambler and he yeah. needs the money he needs he's that. he's not doing very well financially Again, so, you can debate the morality of that all you want, yeah. but you can't lump everybody in with Phil Mickelson if you think that's wrong or, you know, you, yeah, each of these is a separate case, but trash talking and putting athletes versus athletes, like I said, great on the field. There's that barrier between the fans and the players and whatever it's kind of, it's like whatever happens on the field stays on the field, right? Like, yeah, you'll see that there's a rivalry, but it doesn't bleed over into everybody's lives. And it doesn't bleed over into what everybody can see and turn it into a media circus. Now, yeah, people just take people just take straight to Twitter when they yeah, got a problem. I, they just go straight to Twitter. Everybody yep. sees your private business. Everybody sees your beef. Yeah, it generates a bunch of clicks, but I think it's actually bad for athletes in the media overall. No, it is. Uh, you know, the difference is okay. Um, like Shannon Sharp and Ray Buchanan, you know, Ray Buchanan said Shannon Sharp looked like a horse and Shannon Sharp said, hey, you know, I may look like a horse, but if I was driving down, a, you know, a mountainside and snow was falling down and there was an avalanche and Ray Buchanan was, his truck was stuck, I'd drive right past it. You know, stuff like that. Yes, they, those guys are saying that stuff about each other in a media interview, but you're excited for the game and you, you want to see that play out. It's a rivalry that happens, you know. And that's different than even I, – I think even it's changed on the field. You know, before you had these players – I'm not saying nobody got into fights, but before you had players verbally saying, yeah, I'm going to beat you. Yeah, you, you're not as tough as me. You're not as man as me. You don't want none of this. But instead of being like, oh, I'm not man enough, how about you fight me right? Instead of that, it was, okay, how about you score on me? How about you prove to me that I'm not better than you by trying to win this game? You know, it wasn't an Odell and Josh Norman. Where, oh, you, you want to test me or you want to oh, – and then every play, they're fighting. They're get, when they're lined up, Odell's trying to give him a concussion, all that stuff, because of taunting that Norman did earlier before the game with a baseball bat. And he made reference to the question of Odell Beckham Jr.'s personal relationships, whether it was homo or hetero, and I'm going to leave it at that. You know, stuff like that, it gets personal – so then they feel like they have to handle it personally. You can even go Michael Crabtree and Nakeem to lead, ripping his chain off. So Crabtree's like, all right, the next time, the next year I see him, it's on. And it was. He fought him again the next year. He just didn't have a chain, luckily enough, even though, well, he no, he did. To lead tried to rip it, but he couldn't. Just stuff like that. That's changed because this is what's happened in athletes and even in our society. People can dish it, but they can't take it. They love to hear what kind of clever insults they can come up with, and they love to throw shots. Some people do it more directly. Like I said, Michael and Martellus Bennett, some people do it a little bit in a more passive way, like a Russell Wilson and things of that nature. But people can dish it better than they can take it. And that's been known throughout human history, but it's especially prevalent in sports. And it's disappointing because Excuse me, because none of this adds to the game. It's not like, oh, this is going to be a great rivalry. Because now people didn't want to see Norman against Obel De oh, Obel oh, Odell Beckham Jr. Because if it was going to be a matchup, they want to see if they were going to fight again. 
you know, and it takes away from the sport. Like I said, there's a difference when Shannon Sharp, I keep using Shannon, but he's the best example, goes up to a Pittsburgh Steelers and goes, yeah, number 95, little ugly mug, stuff like that. It creates things of, of an interest. You know what I mean? If you want to fight about it, they usually handle that after the game. And if they, if, if they handled it during the game, it was what it was. But even a perfect example, Kevin Durant and Carmelo Anthony, uh, Garnett, Kevin Garnett and Carmelo Anthony, you're bringing up the man's wife, stuff like that. I'm not saying players back then didn't do that, but that escalated to off the court activity. And that's what I'm saying. So many of these players have this bravado of, I'm not going to let anybody, any man test me. So I'm a fight and they don't fight on the court and I, I or the field. And uh, to keep from being as long-winded as I naturally am, I think that's the problem. We're also seeing it change on the field, as you said, even we're, you said it's changing off the field and stuff. I say it's also changing on the field because that's why we're seeing more and more fights than we used to. And I'm not saying, again, that they didn't happen, but players have lost the plot. If, if someone messed with MJ, MJ's first response, even though he did get into fights, wasn't, Oh, I'm gonna have to. T- I'm gonna have to, you know, throw some hands on this guy because he's testing me. It's like, all right, I'm gonna drop sixty on you tonight. Then you're gonna see who's last. But these guys now, their first response is to fight wherever it is. Yeah. So, like, like uh, again, I, I mean, I bring up the Last Dance again, but it's a great documentary and gives some insight. There was a, I think there was a playoff game. I'd have to look at the exact one, but I'm pretty sure there was a playoff game where the game before a player did pretty well against Michael Jordan. And said, and then spouted off something to a reporter about how you know something disparaging about Michael Jordan or how good the player was, and Michael Jordan was like, "All right, I know what I got to do now." Yeah. And proceeds to drop fifty on him the next game. It wasn't. It's not like it's, it's not like okay, I got to come throw hands. He's like, "All right, this man invoked the beast, so now I got to go out and I got to drop fifty just because exactly. he used my name in a bad way." Now it's, exactly. it, I think it has to do a lot with the personal brand that everything is yeah, on social media now. Right. Cause like, yep. Now it's not so much like if, if two players on a team got in a fight back in the day, it would be like, okay, two players. I mean, they'd go on about their way and the, the story was still overall about, you know, the game of the teams, but now Akib Talib and uh, Crabtree get in a fight. It's on social media. Now everybody's, you know, talking about these two players individually and who got the better of who and yeah. how it reflects them personally. It's so much about the personal brand and social media and something that I just don't like about social media is that it causes issues <coughs> like that, in my opinion, between. No, athletes. no, and you're, you're 100% right because now there's more of this bravado of, and especially, and I'm just saying this, and it's the truth, especially when you get these guys from low-income neighborhoods and stuff like that, that's all they know. So when they get these brands, it's like, I'm not going to let this fool talk down to me. You know the difference between them and MJ, the reason why MJ was a little bit more refined in some cases, even though he did get into some fights, MJ actually went to, to college. He went to North Carolina. So he got that experience and he became a better professional on the court instead of being like, oh, I'm going to fight this guy like a Charles Barkley or, or Shaq, even though Shaq did go to school, it was a, okay, I'm going to drop 50, 40, 60, whatever. I'm, I'm going to embarrass you on this court because that's what I'm doing here. I'm not going to go to, they didn't have it back then, but I'm not going to go in interviews. We can use interviews as an example and trash you until after the game. Because after the game, I can do it because I kicked you behind. But I'm not going to do it before the game. And if you do that to me, then, I, then I'm going to have to destroy you. Again, now it's a it's more of a bravado thing. And again, that's more of a reflection of our society as a whole. It's a bravado of I'm not going to let any man disrespect me. So I'm going to fight right here, right now to prove I am not a punk because I'm not going to let him say what he said to me and not check him. But a lot of players have lost the idea of let me check him through my play, not from what I say, <laughs> bars, or from what I do, because that's when you get the constant fights. That's when you get even the malice in the palace. That's how you get stuff like that. When people feel like, nah, I'm up, I don't, because you're not playing the, and I think that's why it doesn't create rivalries. We're not talking about rivalries at this point, 
Because you know it's a rivalry? The Pistons and the Bulls when Jordan was there. Jordan and Thomas. Because they got physical with Michael. And Michael was getting upset. And Michael was shoving Bill Lambeer and all this stuff. But that's still a rivalry because it contributed to on-the-court play and it contributed in games. Michael wasn't fighting them in the stands. That's not focusing on the game. That's focusing on a personal issue that may or may not show up. And if it doesn't show up, fans are disappointed because that's not what they wanted to see something else. With Again, I take it back to Odell and Josh Norman. Fans, Football fans would have been happy or contact sport fans or combat sport fans would have loved it if every time those two faced each other, they started fighting. But they didn't. They did it one time. But, and that's the thing, it, it overshadowed the game. I guarantee you very few people, and they're either Giants fans, which if they are, they should be ashamed of themselves, or they're either Carolina Panthers fans. And I only those fans, in my opinion, could tell me who won that game between the Giants and Carolina when Odell and Josh were fighting. Other than that, nobody remembers anything past them fighting every down. And it's same thing. We can even go take it a little bit further. 2009, Andre Johnson and Cortland Finnegan. Nobody probably remembers who won that game from the Titans and the Texans, but they remember Andre Johnson and Cortland Finnegan fought, and they fought hard. I don't think Odell could have withstood that type of punch from Andre, but stuff like that. You know, and, and I think that it, as much as it's taking away from the game off the, the court because of Twitter, because of the social media brands, all this stuff, it's doing it on the court, too, because now these guys are not thinking like professionals. Again, everything that we're realizing now talking to each other about this is like an on-air therapy session. Everything that we're realizing talking about this is that not only has the game changed, but the athlete's mentality has too, to where they're more relaxed. They treat this like they're playing in the park with their friends, not like I am a professional superstar and I'm not going to lower myself to beating you up or having you beat me up. So I'm just going to beat you in this game because that's undeniable. See, it's like what we're talking about with what you're talking about social media. See on social media, it's a, Ooh, Josh Norman won, or Odell Beckham won the fight, or, or, or this guy won the fight, or that guy won the fight. But when MJ put up 60 on you after you talked noise, MJ won. There was no question. Right. They weren't talking about, oh, but he, Michael Jordan still get knocked out. That didn't matter. They're not boxing. They're playing basketball, and Jordan destroyed him. Same thing with Shannon Sharp. There was never a, yeah, but I bet Ray Buchanan could beat him up. Doesn't matter. He scored on him. He's got three touchdowns, 180 yards, and six receptions. Doesn't matter if he can beat him up in a fight. They're not UFC, they're not cage fighters, not boxers, not wrestlers. They're playing football and he's losing. Now it's uh man, you really gonna let him do you like me? Man, you better do something about that and stuff like that. Chris Paul is one of the most mild mannered people, not in the locker room. I've heard something different from locker rooms, but on the court, he doesn't let a lot get to him. But as the game progressed, he started becoming a part of that new generation of no, I'm gonna shove this guy and because I, I can't let him just check me. And it's just one of those things where that's a that's a growing problem that I'm noticing. I just noticed this on the summer side card, not even on the main event. It's fantastic. But that's something else that I'm noticing with the game and its de-evolution, whether it's football, basketball. A lot of these athletes, especially since a lot of them are just in it for the money and the fame, a lot of them are losing sight of what it means to actually beat somebody. And I think it's interesting that you kind of put out that they were, it was more like they were playing with their friends. I think that's social media contributing to that lack of divide between the field and the fans. Right. Cause now like before you were an athlete, right. That was the dividing line. You were a football player or a basketball player and you were judged based almost all, not all the time, but, Like you were almost always judged by what you did on the court back at, you know, 60s, 70s, 80s, when nobody knew what you were doing with your private life, you were judged pretty much explicitly by what you were doing on the court or on the field of play by most people. Cause that's, you're an athlete. That's what you did. Now with social media, you see their private lives, you see everything they're doing. And so they are not athletes. They're personalities that play sports. 
And so when you're a personality, like same thing, like with influencers, streamers, whatever, when you're a personality, you have to generate buzz because that's how you get deals and that's how you get revenue. So now that's, I think what you're, it's a good point is, you know, since there's not that dividing line anymore and you're not an athlete, you are a personality that plays sports. That's where the personal attacks and the other stuff come in and you see a lot more fights because you have to uphold your brand. You have to generate buzz just like anything else. That's how you do it. You're not just, you're, you are unfortunately not just judged by your play on the court anymore or your play on the field anymore. It it's, you're just not, I think there's maybe some, maybe in the individual sports, tennis, golf, maybe, yeah. but like on team sports now, it's it, you're gone are the days of it being the team. It is, you know, and it, the media hasn't helped that at all. Right. Like, no, when, when, when Luca came to the Mavericks, it's like, okay, guys, this is Luca's team. Right. That was like the big deal. It wasn't like, oh, wow, the Mavs have got a good player. It's like, no, okay, guys, everybody knows this is Luca's team now. Yeah. They, and whenever, whenever, wherever LeBron goes, he goes to the Lakers, be like, all right, well, it's LeBron's team now to do whatever he wants. I think the thing about like, Michael Jordan back in the 90s was, yeah, it was Jordan's team, but it was still the Bulls, I guess, from what I remember from about that time. Um, yeah. And yeah, he was the centerpiece, but it's not like, and maybe Jordan, Jordan's really a bad example, I think, because he was such a big, he was such a big part of pop culture. That, that's probably not an apt example, but I'm trying to think of somebody from, from earlier. Um, and I think basketball is not really a great example either because a lot of teams end up having that star. That like one even, star player, yeah, yeah. Even when it like when it was Bird versus it, – like it was the Celtics versus the Magic and they had a big rivalry. But a but lot of times day, it, was it was showcased as Bird versus – Bird versus Magic. Johnson. Yeah. Um, yeah. Football football's better for that example just because like yeah. you said, basketball, and like, and like we've said on the show multiple times, basketball it's so much easier for that one star to be seen and viewed as head and shoulders above everybody else that it does become their team you know people still say the bulls won this but when you think chicago bulls to this day you think of michael just like when you think Cavs, you think lebron and even uh, if you think miami heat it's just lebron with two other faces Dwayne wade and chris bosh but you think of those guys in football it's a lot different because you can't say Patriots and just think Tom Brady you can but you also think well no he did have Rob Gronkowski who's arguably the best tight end to ever play and he did have Julian Edelman who's one of the most underrated receivers to ever play and he had coach Belichick even though now we know it was more Brady than Belichick but yeah you, you see what I'm saying you can encompass more faces in football basketball if you've got that one guy you got that one guy right and I think maybe the best I think maybe the best remaining sport in my opinion that you know, you can say what you will about soccer, but there's so many substitutions that come in and out. Unless you are like a Ronaldo or a Messi or a or an Mbappe, a clear like number one, like top five player in the world. On a lot of these teams, they are just let me you know. Maybe you have some personalities, but they're not. You know, they're nowhere near the same level of you know back and forth. At least that I've seen on Twitter and stuff between like. MLS players as there are NBA or or uh NFL or anything like that. It's just I don't know. I, I don't like social media and what it's done for uh athletes overall. I think you know it's great that they can develop a personal brand, but then it leads to stuff, you know, just to kind of wrap everything up here, it leads to stuff like Draymond and LeBron saying stuff that's ignorant of the total situation and that comes across bad. And then they have to backpedal and apologize because they didn't get that training. And that's, that's where we end up on, on athletes talking is, you know, do at the bare minimum, do your research before you go on. Yeah, your do show. your research for your research your mouth. and have a good editor. Don't do it live. That's why we don't do this live. So if we say <laughs> something <laughs> dumb, we can cut it out. Don't oh, do your boy. stuff live. Don't no. get a good editor that's not going to leave that stuff in. 
and just do your research. He should be, he should be fired for having that in there. Oh, man. Uh, well, that'll do it for the main events. Thank you so much for our summer sidecard, I should say. <laughs> it was it's, long as the main event. So. It's the main events summer sidecard is how I'm, I'm posting it. So, you know, it's, it's all part of the same thing. Appreciate you watching. Stick around. Next week, we'll do some good stuff. I hope there will be some more stuff in the news for us to talk about. More